family. We serve the same God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's sovereign, he's almighty, he's majestic, and he's eternal. That's our God for you. He's the same God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I thank God for the opportunity for us to be in his presence today. I thank God for all that he has done and all that he is doing and for what's to come. There is none like unto him. He's God all by himself. Amen. Amen. Praise God today. Hallelujah. We're looking at the subject, Behold the New. Behold the New. And the objective is it's for you. So you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, behold the new because it's for you. Tell them like you mean it. Say, neighbor, behold the new for it's for you. Amen. Amen. Give God praise right there. Hallelujah. You see, I believe as we continue to align ourselves with God's plan and purpose for our individual lives and as a corporate body, we'll be propelled into a new dimension. I believe that. As we continue to align. As, you see, God has called KRI to be a catalyst and a beacon to many. It's embedded in us. It's already set for us. For that light to shine so others will be drawn to him. He has found a place where his glory can be fully expressed. I said he has found a place where his glory can be fully expressed. He has found a resilient and robust people. Who in the face of adversity will still lift their voices and shout. Will still lift their voices and praise. Hallelujah. 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 A people such like us that will not bow and will not faint. He has found a people that will run and not grow weary. He has found a people who will shout for his glory. A people that won't wait on him to do it for us. We will praise him before he does it, when he does it, and after he does it. Do you understand this? A people that will learn to wait on him and mount up with wings as eagles when we have to. A people that will arise and shine for their light has come. A people that are bold and strong. A people that understands their functions as chosen stewards, as kingdom citizens, as his own people. A people that will give to him their all and then some. A people that are, that, that's not ashamed to call his name. A people that that are not inhibited by their surroundings and they will fully express themselves with a loud shout, with a roar. A oh my God. Uh, such a people are right here in Kingdom Restoration International. A people that will live for him and tell others about him. Hallelujah. A people. Jesus. And will stand for holiness and righteousness. A people that are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. What a people. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. 
who were not a people but are now the people of God. Who would not obtain mercy but now have obtained mercy. A people that others would have rejected or put on the backside, but a people now that God has brought forward. With the above declaration that was just made, I want you to lift your hands right where you are and begin to say to God, Thank you that I am a part of this people that you have chosen. That you've called for a time such as this. That, oh God, I was not left behind. I was not left out. But God, you saw it fit. Even while I was in a mess. To pull me out of darkness. And bring me into your marvelous light. And now calling me. Oh God, your people. A part of your bride. Calling me a part of your people. Your chosen people. God, I'm honored to be called by you. And I thank you. For who you are. And what you've done, I sense an urgent call for us to prepare for what he's about to do in our lives individually and as a corporate body. There's an urgent call. I want to beseech you by the mercies of God to stand robust in the spirit realm, to align yourselves. It is necessary. For you to go to the next level alive. You need to arrive alive. According to theology, when God was about to do something new for the children of Israel, his approach was not without a command given to them. He approached it, he was about to do something new for them. And God had good intentions for his people. But he had to address what was hindering and could have hindered them. He addressed the very thing by saying to them through a prophecy from Isaiah. And we're going to look at it in Isaiah 43. While Israel was under... Babylonian captivity. He was about to do something new. And he released this prophecy through Isaiah. See, I believe God is talking to Kingdom Restoration International today through his scriptural reference. Through this scriptural reference. I believe because some could say, but this was back then and this was for the children of Israel. Well, the word of God is for now. It's alive because he's alive and well and he is the word. So he used this prophecy. You see, the word of God expresses the thoughts of God. And his thoughts right now is about Kingdom Restoration International. Jeremiah 29, 11 states, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Other versions would have said, I know the plans I have for you. But he don't plan without thinking first. That's why we have been made like this. We think and then we act. We think and then we speak. We think first. And some people will say, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think about it. Yes, you did. At some point you did. It's lodged in your subconscious mind. Behold the new. Receive what's due. So I was juggling between two titles. And I, I found that this, this one is what we're going to use as we, we go through this process. Behold the new. <laughs> Receive what's due. Turn to someone and tell them, behold the new. 
Receive what's due. Receive what's due. Ask them why. <laughs> Say it's for you. It's for you. So receive what's due. But first, you got to behold the new. You got to see the thing. You got to be observant. You got to be accurately aligned. Sight and insight must increase. Let's look at the word. Isaiah 43, 18 to 19a says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. I know we touched on this scripture many times before, but this is a new thing, a new day. And trust God as we go through this. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. You see, God knew that Israel would have struggled to move forward because of thoughts of their past. They went through a very rough period. And they also went through some good times. And the both are dangerous if you focus on them. But we're going to get to that. You see, this thing about their thoughts, this is true for the thoughts of the bad experiences as well as the good experiences. So when, G, when, when God was addressing this through Isaiah, he was addressing it from a holistic perspective. And in Isaiah 43, 16 to 17, if we back it up a bit, the children of Israel were reminded, they were reminded of the entire Red Sea uh, miracle that took place. Yet, in verse 18, the prophecy came with instructions to, to not remember the former things. 16, 17, they're talking about the Red Sea, and it was highlighted. But yet still one verse after, he says, do not remember. The formula God used to prepare for what was coming was something that we have to pay attention to. This is a system he, was, he set in place. He used this formula to prepare his people for what he was about to release. What he did, it was... To ignite the preparation process that required a paradigm shift. You see, he loves us so much that he deals with what he knows can trip us up. He releases his promises and he says, but you need to do this. Because he wants us to partner with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He denounced the old and highlighted the new. He said, do not remember the former things. He placed emphasis on the mental structure by instructing them to give attention to their thoughts about what was coming and not what they have been through. So I'm looking carefully at this formula. It was a prophecy that came to them through Isaiah, but yet still, there's a formula in there that he used that is really relevant for today. You see, when I look at KRI through the lens of God, I am propelled to instruct you to get ready, be ready, stay ready to move forward with an excellent spirit because there is something that is so beyond us that is right there, hallelujah, in our, in, literally in our reach. But God is preparing us and if you track with God, if you track with what God has been doing individually and corporately, you will realize he has been preparing us for what's coming. You better be excited. Because anything that God does in your life now that you never experienced before, you, you will have to receive it as a new thing. Not for God, for you. When the understanding of that new thing is, that, that is coming gets 
it, you know, embedded in your heart and mind. KRI cannot cling to the past storms nor the past victories. I don't think you, you understand what I'm saying. I, I, need to, I need you to get it. If you get the revelation that God is about to do something new, then you cannot cling. You cannot hold on to the past storms or the past victories while preparing for the impartation and impact of the new. You cannot do it. He said, do not remember. There are things that I'm, I struggle to remember, but there are things that I really do not forget. Like, I can't forget. No matter even I try not to remember. You see, the ability to remember has been given to all. So we have that ability to remember, yet still, he said, do not remember. To not one person, to a people. Inclusive of the capacity to store memories. We have, the, we have the ability to remember and inclusive, we have the capacity to store memories. Are you with me? Yet God told the children of Israel, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. It means the ability to shift mentally is a conscious one. If we have ability, we have the capacity, then when it comes to shifting, he told them to do something that he gave them the ability to do, but he wanted them to choose to do it. Although he commanded it. Your memory can work as a gift or as a lethal weapon. Until you have mastered it, you need to annihilate the life-giving factor of, it, of, of, of the thing which is in your thought pattern. That's the life-giving factor. It's in your thought pattern. You give life to memory. You give power to memory. By the way you think. Not remember the former. God is preparing this house. It is imperative for you to manage your mental system with spiritual intelligence. Stop acting dumb. You ain't no fool. The Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. So you need to understand that it is imperative for you to manage your mental system with spiritual intelligence, not your flesh. That's why God said to me to remind the people, to say to them, move from the classroom worship to the upper room worship. You can't stay in the classroom setting and deal with issues of life. You have to go into the upper room. Behold the new Receive what's due. Because it's for you. I said it's for you. I declare it over this house. Listen to me about this thing about memory. When you, when you use your sensory input and associate meaning to anything or anyone using a somatic kind of encoding, everything is aligned. Your memories last longer. So there must be you investing in your memory. The things you see, the things you hear, all your sensory faculties, everything. It starts to align. And once you keep pondering on those things, your memories will last longer. You check it out. It's in Wikipedia. I really want to get this. When you use sensory input and associate meaning with anything or anyone using Semantic encoding memories last longer. So it means you have work to do for you to remember. So it means <laughs> if you're remembering all the negative things of the past, you are putting in the work for that to happen. 
If you remember the positive things and the victories of the past, you still have to put in work to remember, but somehow it's less work. Memory, and it should be up there for you, memory is the faculty of the mind by which data or information is encoded, stored, and retrieved when needed. It is the retention of information over time for the purpose of influencing future actions. Are you seeing how important and how potent, how powerful memory is? Have you ever tried to remember something very important and you sort of beat up yourself because it's really critical. It's something, let's say, you were supposed to sign a document, you sign the document and you file it, you put it away and you really need this document to close a deal and you just cannot remember. Do you understand? Do you, you, you feel disturbed, frustrated. You, you just get discombobulated. You're all over the place. Because you were not able to remember it. But if that same document, one thought, because you systematically or somatically, somatically aligned things to say, okay, I'm putting this here. And you put things to remind you of where it is. You're no longer going to tell you tie a string on your finger. Well, that wouldn't work for me. I just, I know that. That's not how I remember. I have never gotten that tie a string on the finger thing. All I, I'm thinking is that it's going to stop your blood flow, but... It happens in such a way that this thing, over time, for the, it is the purpose of influencing future actions. And I'm going somewhere with this. Tell your neighbor she's going somewhere. Tell them stay woke. Proverbs 10, 7, 8 says, The memory of the righteous is blessed. The memory of the righteous is blessed is blessed and I looked at this and I'm like but you are placing a lot of emphasis on memory the Lord's Supper do this as often as you remember so memory and I, hope, and I declare that you shall remember this word today I declare it Memory, there's an emphasis placed on memory. The memory of the righteous is blessed. That is so powerful right there. That I am not the only aspect of me that's blessed. My memory is blessed. It means my memory can be contaminated by me. If you have a messed up memory, it ain't got nothing to do with God. Hi. Even if you remember the worst thing that happened to you, you can respond differently to it. Because you would have learned to manage your memory. You see, unfortunately, some people live through the memory of their past. So the outcome is as though they're still there while they're in there now. This cannot be a healthy as a matter of fact, this is very destructive and deadly. Very destructive and deadly. Don't wallow in your hurt, in the hurt and pain of yesterday. Don't swallow the storm. And I want to plug this in. Don't follow the storm either. The storm gone its way and you go in after it to see what it's doing. And then get caught up in the middle of it again. Huh. Now let me, just, let me just balance this for you. At the same time, do not be blinded by the glory of yesterday. But if you see what the Lord did for me yesterday, if you know what the Lord did, and if, if in our real yesterday, God did some supernatural things in this house. Some supernatural thing. But, but, but we cannot glory in that to the point where we miss what he is doing today or what he wants to do today because we are holding on to yesterday's glory. You all need to balance this thing. Manage the system. Monitor operations. 
and manage. So it's not just bad things because the children of Israel, they went through a real rough time, but they also went through some miraculous times. Yeah. Some supernatural things happened. Manna falling from heaven, Red Sea opening, come on. That's some things I would want to remember. Yes, still he said, do not remember the former. In other words, don't, don't mentally, or do not mentally cast your future in stone. Because when you remember your past hurts and pains or your past victories, you tend to make a, draw a picture of your future. You got to be careful. There's only one God and he has a plan. And his plan is for all of us. So you, you are holding on to the past, whichever aspect of it, and you start to tell me now, you start to prophesy into your future, this is what is going to happen. And you trip up yourself. And the enemy comes in and says, aha. He has an aha moment. Aha. I got this one. Let, just let it all go. Prepare to walk in your newness. Kingdom Restoration International. Prepare to walk in your newness. The Holy Spirit will bring back to your memory what is necessary for you in, you, in the context in which it is needed. Not only does he lead you into all truth, in order to lead you into all truth, he has to make sure you remember all truth. So he will set you up in, a, in such a way that in the context that is needed, when it's th that time to remember a particular thing, there are things sometimes I say here when I'm preaching, and there are things I would have read years ago, or, 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 or um, in, in my studies, in Bible school, or whatever, and it will just come up just like that. I said that when I'm listening to the, the word again, the sermon, I'm like, wow. Even at that point, I said, but I didn't remember that. Although I was listening to myself saying it, I said, I, I didn't remember that. And he brings that back, but in context. Don't let Satan in. Don't do that. For he stirs up the memory of the past. And guess what? The Holy Spirit leads you into all truth. He leads you into all of, it, all, all of your past. He leads you into all of your past. And I want this house to be mindful of that. Don't focus on the what ifs. What if I had done that? What if I had gone there? What if I had married her? What if I had married him? What if I had four children instead of one? I don't get caught up in the if onlys. You know the if onlys? The if only of, if I had only known. If, if only, if only I had, if only... You will not be able to receive what God is pouring out now. There's no scripture to validate. He said, don't remember. Do not remember. There's no scripture to validate you in your if onlys and your, your, your what ifs. And we justify ourselves when we think like that. What if? You can't change it because I, I guarantee you, as spiritual as you might be, you cannot go back into a yesterday. Except mentally. There's nothing physical you could do to change your yesterday. Even if you go and change something that you did. Like if I had placed this, this piece of tissue here yesterday and I come today and move it. I still am not undoing yesterday. This is a new action in today. Are you with me? I'm going somewhere with this. Tell your neighbor she's going somewhere with this. Say so pay attention. And ensure that you remember. Second Corinthians 10, 5 to 6 says, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I want you to do something. There is a casting down hallelujah, arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You can never be more knowledgeable than God. Bringing every thought. 
Some of you just, just, you just skim over these, these type of scriptures. Because you want to be set in your way. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So you're not capturing your thoughts and storing it in your mind. You are capturing your thoughts and giving it over. You're bringing it all together and giving all of it. To the obedience of Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Align your thoughts with his thoughts. Align your thoughts with his thoughts. If your mind is stayed on him, what is promised? He will be stayed in perfect peace. Move forward with this, a great amount of expectation by faith. Move forward. And God has been saying that to us. It's time to move forward. But I want you to move forward with an excellent spirit. Move forward. Because he knows what he is preparing us for the next few months. Things are about to happen, y'all. There's not a seasonal thing with us, you know. I'm not a seasonal preacher. I'm a seasoned preacher, but I'm not a seasonal preacher. Got me some salt. We need to learn to live now in our now. Live now in God's will for our lives. For your lives. Live now. He will do his part. His word will not return unto him void. He will do his part. We have to live now in our now. Philippians 3, 13 to 14 says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. I want to say something here about this. He said, I do not count myself to, up to have apprehended. In other words, he don't have all the wisdom, all the knowledge, all, everything. He, he was not able to capture everything. But he said, but one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. There, this is a conscious decision. But one thing I do. Not God doing it. He made a decision to do it. And that's what we need to do. Are you with me? He said I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call. Of God in Christ Jesus. Pressing forward requires mental, physical, and spiritual strength. So it means you have to take a holistic approach in building yourself in order to press forward. If you have to press, it means there is an, a, some, a, a form of resistance there. And you have to put in the work. Y'all know the devil don't want nobody to move forward. Y'all know that, right? He is nobody's friend. What is necessary for you to remember will be brought back to you via the Holy Spirit. Just press forward. There are some things I don't want to remember. Can I get a witness? And there are some things I don't mind remembering. Yeah? Yeah? And there are some things I want happen so I can remember. <laughs> John 14, 26 says, 26 says, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. I, I need us to get this. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will set in my name. And we know he's here, right? Yeah. He will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all things that I said to you. I want us to see something very, very pertinent here for us. We have to depend on the Holy Spirit. We have to believe that the Holy Spirit has what we need to remember. 
We have to also bring to remembrance, uh, we have to allow, sorry, the Holy Spirit to bring to remembrance what Jesus said. But I want us to look at this. We have to know what Jesus said. You have to know it. You have to be in the word of God for yourself. You can't be going, ah, Holy Spirit, help me to remember, help me to remember. And he's like, happy to remember what? When I woke you up to go into the word, what did you do? You yawned and you went back to sleep. Or you checked your phone. And you went into Instagram. An instant grammatical error in your life. And you switched to Facebook. But a book of life you could not face. Huh? And if you look at Twitter, you wake up the next morning and you're twitting. Because you're discombobulated. Goodness me, if he's waking you up, don't be like, I rebuke you, Satan. I, this is a TMI moment. Many times, let me just use somebody else. Many times you get up, well, you know, it's me now, huh? And you just got to go. You just got to go. So you go into the washroom, but you don't want to open your eyes because somehow opening your eyes just takes the sleep out of it completely. So, oh, thank you. I got some witnesses. But you got to know where your washroom is. And you got to know from where you are how to get there. So, and you're there, but the moment you open your eyes, you're kind of up. If that's the case, I guarantee you, if you begin to pray, you're going to start yawning. If you get into the Word, you're going to literally fall asleep. Because the devil don't want you awake at all to read the Word or to pray. You try it. It's like a person that can't sleep. What were you doing in the interim? Huh? You could never come and say you couldn't sleep. because I, I get, And if... You get into the world and you really don't sleep. It means that's exactly what God wants it. It is not the devil that will keep you up to pray or to be in the world. I guarantee you. Any of you take it, you'll win. So there was a time when I, I drifted a little bit because I was really tired. And I knocked on something and I opened my eyes and I realized. I guess now you know it's me. So I opened my eyes. And I realized, okay, I said, you're awake. And I went back to bed, and I said, okay, I'm going to do this. And it worked. I started speaking tongues, because my brain to formulate words was good. <laughs> <laughs> TMI. But I just started. <laughs> and then, you know, I was like, thank you, Jesus. God, I give you a prayer. It works. Nobody should come in here and say, I cannot sleep. I was only up till after 2 a.m. because of the word and the shift and the this and that and, you know, and, and preparing for today. And, but when it comes to sleep, I know he said sweet sleep. Promise. We are promised sweet sleep. Sweet. Sweet. Some of you are sleeping, but it ain't sweet. So you get up next day and you're sour. Sweet sleep will produce sweetness. I'm just saying. If you put honey in a jar, when you pour it, what do you get in? So when you put sweet sleep in you, what, what, what comes out? Sweetness. Just saying. I'm just saying. You see? Let's get back to this. If Jesus did not say it, then you must be mindful of who is bringing it back to your memory. If this thing is plaguing you, it's not lined up with the word, it's not lined up with anything concerning your purpose and your destiny that's going to produce good things, then you need to check carefully, check your source. Check your source. You see, I'm teaching you. There are things that a lot of people don't like to talk about in churches, the house of God. But I'm instructed. Because many are tripping because of their memory. Which is blessed. So we ain't supposed to be tripping over our memory. 
And I was tripping for years, I remember, when I was abused. And every time I would tell the testimony, it's as though it was actually happening. And I would be in tears. And I would start to feel certain things. My brain would get all cloudy. My heart would be racing. My body begins to, uh, be began to malfunction because I literally set myself right back in that place. By choice. Not realizing what I was doing. I was not able to see, to behold the new. I was not able to receive what was due to me. Because I was focused on what happened. And not what was happening. And not what will happen. There is something called mental time travel. It's real. Time travel is real mentally. If I ask some of you right now, do you remember when you were 10 years old? You might, some will say yes. If I ask some of you, do you remember when you were 15 years old? Some of you will say yes. But now I will ask some of you, do you remember when you were a baby? Most of you would say no. And someone might say yes, I remember when I didn't want a bottle. I can't remember those things. There's no way. When you remember an episode of your life, and I want you to hear this. This is not a jump up and holler kind of message this morning. I want you to get this. When you remember an episode of your life, it can build you or break you. It can persuade you to kill yourself or to live triumphantly triumphantly are you hearing me and I believe God is teaching us how to manage our memory he told them do not remember I'm like you gave the capacity to remember and then you said do not remember they had the ability and the capacity to store memories and then you said do not remember episodic memory can directly transport you into your past and then you can really become the person you used to be there where you once lived and where you had the experiences. Some of you, and this is not to, because I'm cold hearted or anything, because I've suffered loss, lost my both parents within nine months. So I know what that is like. I remember the third year after my mother passed. I just passed by a room in my house and I saw a, a photo of her three years after. And I broke down as though I just got the news that she passed. And I'm like, what's going on? It didn't happen in the second year. I was a little messed up the first year. But by the third year, I thought I was a lot better. And just, one, just like that, one memory. I think I passed by and I was thinking about something. And I, 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 my thoughts, and I saw her picture, I started to think about, you know, if she was still here, I would have done this and I would have done that and taken the opportunity. And then I just went, I was, I was a mess. I had to call on God because I was like literally in a mess. And I had to call on God. And as I called on him to deal with the memory, I didn't call it a memory. I said, God, take this thing, deal with this thing. And this hurt and this pain I'm feeling because of what happened. And I started to call on him. He started to now help me to manage my memory. So I started to think about the times when she would make me laugh. She really liked to talk a lot of nonsense. Oh, dear God. No, I didn't take after her. <laughs> but something shifted. And I was able to literally start to think about things that she would have said. You know, um, from when she came, you know, she's like, and I, I can't say some of the things right now, but it was really funny. And as, all through the tears, a smile came. But one memory tripped me up as though it just happened. This thing is real. It affects who you are and who you are becoming if it's not managed. Why am I talking about this today? Ask God. God gave you the ability to remember, yet his instruction is today, right now for us, do not remember the former things. 
And if you heed this word, I guarantee you, you will see an explosion in your life to the next level. And remember, I'm not talking about all his pains and hurt. I'm talking about your victories as well. Stop boasting about what he did yesterday. What is he doing today? Can you even see it? Can you behold the new? Can you behold it? You see, he knows the challenges to do that. He knows the challenges to not, it will take not to remember. He also knows that it is possible to do it. Because he wouldn't tell you to do something that is not possible to be done. A baby. Well, for me, I was once a baby, in case you were wondering. I was. I, I, I know, I, I was, I was told. Because I can't remember being a baby. I saw a picture of me, I said, that could never be me. Because when I look at me now, I'm like, Nah, I can't, I don't want to remember that. <laughs> Wasn't as cute as I thought. <laughs> Just saying. Y'all, let me see your pictures. <laughs> Anyhow. I can't remember when the doctor slapped me. And I think the person that I grew into probably kicked him. No, my hand was too small. But I can't even remember. I want to, but I can't. Can you? Can you remember when you actually just came out? No, you can't. Why you don't want now you were doing going through anything? She said you don't this, this, this lady that y'all can't see on screen. She don't want to remember that. I want to remember, I want to see the doctor's face. As a toddler, there are things you might remember in there. As an adult, you remember more. But my, what I'm getting to is that there are a lot of things you have forgotten. So I'm bringing the point home. It is possible to not remember. That's why he told them, do not remember. Because it's already setting us from the beginning. You can't remember your first lap. Huh? You don't slap babies again. In my day, long ago, it was slapped. So what do you do with babies now? But I can't remember my first rub. <laughs> rub a dub in a tub. I can't remember that. Can you? I'm trying to bring a valid, I know we're laughing, but I'm trying to bring a point home to you. That it is possible to not remember. So that's why he told them, do not remember. Choose it. Now that you're an adult, you can choose not to remember. Now when a thought is coming, I could pass and look at, at my, my mom's uh, picture. And then I would see it. And I would choose to remember the funny aspect of her. You understand what I'm saying? And I still pass and say, I wish you were here. You could have, you know, enjoy this, enjoy that. I don't talk much to her. I say much. I don't talk to her. I talk about her. Or you all think I'm all, you know. <laughs> but there are things that I cannot remember. I cannot remember my primary, my preschool teacher's name. Not my preschool. Maybe I used to get a lot of licks, I don't know. But I remember my teacher from college. You understand what I'm saying? I rem you, you can remember, so now, now it's selective memory. So let me, let me just say something to you. When you are depressed, it's because you are focused on a memory that you conjure up. The enemy will kind of prick you and bring the activation, but you do the rest. He might allow you to pass and see a billboard sign. And one word and it triggers up. There are triggers that he uses. But the rest is up to you. I said the rest is up to you. Someone that molested you in your past. Like I saw online someone that molested me as a child, as a teenager. And I, some years ago when I saw that, I 
I wished I was able to see that because I felt stronger. I felt bigger. I felt if I see you, I could now deal with you. What you did to me, the violation that I experienced because of you. But as I grow older, literally, I lifted up that person in prayer. I manage the memory. Once you can manage the memory, you walk in victory. Let me tell you something. This is a TMI moment. And I got to share this for somebody to be real. You know why I'm like this? Because the same God of yesterday, today, and forever, that same God back then is the same God now that is using me as an oracle. When I wanted to die, when I attempted suicide, he said, no, I got a plan for you. And I felt violated and like north and worth nothing. Didn't want to live. He released life. And then said, see you and your used to be messed up self. I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you in a mighty way. There's recently I saw the vision. He brought back something he showed me years ago. Because I said, God, I didn't have to be born. You didn't have to bring me to go through all of this. Grew up poverty stricken. Abused by people who said they loved me. Relatives. Lived on hand-me-downs. You didn't want it? Bring it for me. Called out man of names. And yet still... When he looked at me, he saw his image, and he, he knew exactly how he was going to clean me up. Yeah. To me, I was more than a diamond in the rough. I don't think I was even formed then while I was down there. It was that bad. But he washed me with his precious blood. He wrapped his loving arms around me. So when I come to him, whether you are present or not, once I know he is present, I would give him the kind of praise that says, God, I'm grateful that you didn't let me die. I'm grateful that you took me out of darkness. Some of you pretended, but you know he brought you out of darkness. Pretending that you've never been through. These tears are not tears of sadness because I don't feel that pain. The memory don't produce pain. Now I know I walk, I'm walking in victory. Which brings me to my next point. If your memory is producing pain, you have not been delivered. You have not been healed. Because things like what I just said could be brought back to my memory and I can release it with gratitude that I'm here today. And not with regret with what happened. Nobody wants that to happen. But I don't live in the regret. That's a prayer I've been praying. Recently. God, I don't want any, any regrets. You know when you regret you're messed up? Huh? Oh, y'all are so holy in here. Mm. Am I the only one? Oh. Listen to me. If your memory or your memories are producing pain, you're undone. You have given it over to God. Did not say your memory have the power to keep you depressed. Your memory is blessed. Your memory is blessed. You all saw it in scripture. It's blessed. God wants you to manage 
Your ability to remember via the help of the Holy Spirit. Why am I talking about this today? Why are you here listening? Those of you online, why have you tuned into this particular message today? Because God wants you to be delivered from whatever it is that's captured in your memory. You cannot be effective today while you mentally travel back in time to your yesterday. Doesn't matter what you try, you're going to keep failing. You would reach this far, and then you just realize, all the way back. Because he's the God of now. Although he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he is dealing with you now. God did not want... An evaluation of what he was about to do. He did not want an examination or even consideration of the old things because of what he was about to do. You can't try to evaluate the new if while you are evaluating the old. You can't try to examine the new. No, you can't examine the new because it's new to you. And he said, behold, I will do a new thing. We're coming to that. You have to learn to behold the new and receive what's due because it's for you. In verse 18 of Isaiah Isaiah 43 he continues said, nor consider the things of old. Nor consider the things of old. Do not ponder. Do not focus continuously. Do not think about it over and over and over and over. What you consistently consider becomes your reality. Don't you see you start to behave like it? You start to look like it? God is really separating me from some people and some things in my life in preparation for the new level. You have to understand, when you, let me me, me just, how, how to put this? This happens because The mind cannot differentiate subconsciously between imagination and reality. And science has proven that through virtual reality. Many of you have not experienced it, but even even in your 3D or 4D experiences at at the movie theater, you you, you, you try to reach out. For those of you who have experienced 3D or 4D, you try to reach out to touch the thing As though it's right there, but it's not there. Huh? Because your mind can't really tell subconsciously, can't differentiate what's real from from what is imaginary. Have you ever wondered why you get so emotionally unstable? And sometimes you even cry while looking at a movie. And for those of you who don't cry because you're tough, you get angry at the actor. You're stupid. You're t- telling them off. But you're stupid. Why you didn't do that? Why you didn't? For women who have been abused, when you see a movie and there's abuse in it, you're. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, you Boy, if that was me. Damn thing that's only happening in movies, yes? When the man leaves you, go on with the next woman, you meet in the supermarket and you're laughing and talking only in the movies. 
Just saying. Well, at least not in Trinidad and Tobago. What are we going to take you to the cold slurry and give you a slab of beef, turkey, or something? And then make you pay for it. But have you ever wondered? I'm still talking memory now. Your, your subconscious mind, it can't tell, it can't differentiate what's real. Why we get so emotional? Why if I start a, you know, probably show a clip of something and you see someone get killed, you get all, and the atmosphere changes. People get emotional for cartoons. Those cartoons, they don't die. Yet still you're like, ouch. Oh gosh. Donald Duck and they're like, and they're going, for, they're going shooting high up. Coming down. I have up come down and And you're like, oh God. It ain't real, y'all. It ain't real. Listen. Like some of you real Daffy Duck Donald Duck fans. I apologize. But it ain't real. I was a Bruce Lee fan. I don't want Bruce Lee to get one lash. Because I shadow in. Why didn't move so why didn't? And I feel, I'm just feel the pain. But so God just mind couldn't tell the difference. Unfortunately, I look, I used to, before I was saved, you look at wrestling. Uncle Jovica and them fellas on that. Don't touch your Vika, you know. He mo I wasn't, I mean, literally, emotionally unstable. Don't touch Uncle Jovica. We had a connection in my mind. You're laughing, but you're getting this? You know you're laughing, but some of you experienced that before. Yeah, Uncle Jovica. But you need to understand that because the mind cannot really tell subconsciously what is real or not, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. Because if you could get emotional over something you see on TV, knowing that they are acting. I checked myself. Unfortunately, I got caught up. I looked at a movie where the world was coming to an end. And people were hurt. Cars went down in the earth. And I was like, oh gosh. My heart ended up on my chest. It started to feel tight. I was like, hey girl, hey, hey, it's a movie. I don't like heights. I'm just saying, I really don't like heights. And you climbing anything high on a movie, my legs are starting to feel needles. What is that about? I'm, I'm drawing real examples for you to understand how this thing works. I, go, I was like, what's going on? I am sitting watching a movie that is not real. I'm feeling needles. Y'all laugh. This week, the Holy Spirit going to deal with y'all. Laugh. Uh, uh, somebody said they're not watching no TV. That's probably God talking to you. But you can train the mind. That's why it is possible to... The ask the Holy Spirit to help you rewrite your subconscious mind. There are things buried in your subconscious mind, that deep-seated area of your thoughts, of your mind, that, that it, it conjures up thoughts that literally can seem real. And you begin to behave as though it happened. 
It can bring sickness onto your body as well. Into your body. You can get a headache. You can have a dream and get a palpitation. <sighs> and have to run and get water. A dream. A dream is not real. When you dream is real, but a dream is not real. Do you understand? And you... Some of you, when you want to get up from that dream, you can't even go back to sleep. But you leave it right there. You empower it. You give it life. Instead of bringing every thought in cap under subjection, yes, and in captivity. Of the obedience of Christ Jesus. Why am I talking about this today? You better check yourselves. The first aspect of this new move of God involved the synchronization of not remembering the old and actively receiving the new. He about to do a big new move. He said, do not remember. Why? Why is it so important? Because the body of Christ, the church, have been falling prey to unmanaged memories. Even pastors, ministers, men and women of God. We have to do this as well. We have to manage the memory. Otherwise, we just stop altogether. Do you understand this? There is a purpose for God releasing this word today. Through his oracle. Healing and deliverance was for them, the children of Israel. And the same is for us today. Because it's necessary. What he's about to do, you cannot bring your old hurts and pain and your old victories. Because you will expect God to do it the same way. He is saying, but his ways and thoughts are higher than ours. While he remains the same, there are ways he's going to work in your now that he didn't work in your then. So this will enable you to receive the new if you understand that you have to trust God and not your old memories. I firmly believe God wants us to not just hear this word, not just receive it, but apply it. Because this formula was said via a prophecy before he did a new thing. Holy is God. All he had to say, Isaiah, here to tell my people. Tell them, get ready, I'm doing a new thing. Or just say, I'm going to do a new thing. And it's upon them. There are ways he could have said that. But he went straight for the mental construct. He went for their paradigm. Because that was the thing. Remember there was murmuring as well. While they were no longer in Egypt. They were no longer in captivity. The children of Israel were journeying. But they were complaining. They were murmuring. Why? They were remembering the good food they had while they were slaves. You saw your memory could trip you up? It's okay for me to be a slave if you feed me. Feed me, Seymour, feed me. Feed me. Keep me in captivity, but feed me. And never give God the opportunity to walk with you in freedom while he feeds you. That is sad. To feed you with a kind of food that will give you life for eternity. Amen. Behold the new, receive what's due because it's for you. Amen. I said it's for you. Amen. Isaiah 43, 19a says, let's read together. Isaiah 43, 19a. Behold, I will do 
a new thing. Behold, I will do. I'm waiting for it to get up there. It's, okay. Behold, I will do. Are you seeing it? I want us to read it again. I want us to verbalize it. Three, four. Behold, I will do a new thing. What kind of thing he's going to do? A new, thing. a new thing. And if we don't position ourselves, we will never be able to walk in this new thing. You must have a godly view of the new. In order to have a godly view of the new, you have to remain in the presence of God. So you can see through the lens of God, through the eyes of God. Do you understand this? You cannot keep looking through the lens of your past or the lens of the past of others. When my grandmother went through this, so the doctor said, it's hereditary, so I have to go through it. That's a lie from the bottomless pit of hell. Don't receive those things of the past of others into your now. And don't hold on to the things of your past and bring it into your now. That's a lot of weight to carry. There's an interconnectedness in the word with the word that is transitionally transformative when activated in us. We transition. We are transformed. We cannot remain the same. It's transitive and restorative power is undeniably, how to put it, effective in our life. You cannot deny it. We are all here because of him. Because of his love, because of his grace, because of his mercy. We are all here. The word of God is so powerful. It awakens every sleeping consciousness and positively affects your ass, your reticular activating system. My advice to you is to get your ras in order. You want me to say it slower? <laughs> get your reticular activating system in order. The RAS, <laughs> its fundamental role is regulating arousal, like sleep and wake, that transition. It regulates that. It's responsible for our wakefulness and ability to focus, to fight or to flight. It tells you if to stand and fight or if to run. It tells you how to respond hmm. and how to ultimately perceive everything. And the enemy comes in here and he tries to get into your ass. Hmm. I hope you're laughing because you're getting it. Imagine just help me here. <laughs> Reticular activating system. Keep that in mind. But once you get your ass in order, there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. <laughs> you need to have a strong biblical view about matters. So that you can focus on what matters. So that you can remember that you have what it takes to behold anew and receive what's due. Because it's for you. Are you with me somebody? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That includes your ass. Yeah. 
Parents, please repeat. It is for your children. Reticular activating system. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, I pray that our ass is like all set in order. Therefore, if anyone <laughs> is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, God is not going to recreate us. But there is a system that he has set on the inside of us. He tweaks as we mature, as we grow. You see, it was set in us from birth. But as a baby, you couldn't manage anything. So as you develop as a toddler, as a young adult, and as an adult, as an aged person, you mature. So there's an activating process that takes place. So that, that creation, that thing that was already set in, on the inside of you now begins to manifest itself to you as new. And there's, there's a shift in your mindset. New creation, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Once you're in Christ, once you're born again, hallelujah. Once you're living for him, there is no way you can continue walking in your yesterday. That's why some of you, you're tripping. Because you're going forward and backward at the same time. And then when you try to stabilize, you cross. One minute you're up, next minute you're down. One minute you're forward, next minute you're backward. That cannot be of God. Everybody, listen to me carefully. I'm not unreasonable. Everyone goes through a process. Everyone goes through seasons. Everyone goes through whatever. But you can't be repeating the same thing and tripping the same way all the time. Come on. Has God lost his power? Never. Does the blood still work? Yes, it does. Don't be telling me I don't know what I'm talking about. You're dealing with different things. Yes, I understand. You can't be changing age and behaving how you used to be. Not when creation is developing on the inside. Not, not when things are activating on the inside. The more word you get is the more you should be looking like Christ. It is so sad. It literally saddens me when I see people tripping over the same things over and over. And if the devil got a hold and you're in denial that it is so. You need to seek God. And release those things. Manage your memory. We are going forward with or without you. I prefer to go with you. Are you with me? I said my preference is to go with you. But please. Please. Not the same things over and over and over. God's image is so important to him. Listen to this carefully. God's image is so important to him that he will not allow his image to be stuck in the past while he's preparing to return for his bride who carries his image. Can I say it again? God's image is so important to him that he will not allow his image to be stuck in the past while he's preparing to return for his bride who carries his image. That's why you, you have to move forward. That's why you can't stay back there. He's coming for a bride without spot and without wrinkles. You stay back there, you would be like a salt prune. Stagnation breeds death. You're going to quail up. See, God knows and understands the, the imminent progression that is needed for prophecy to be fulfilled. He understands this. It's imminent progression. It's needed. He understands this. So therefore, even if he allows a situation to happen, he don't 
want you to stay there. He has given you everything pertaining to life and godliness so you can move forward. He even blessed your memory. Yeah. For goodness sake. That blew me. I was like, my memory is blessed. My memory is blessed. Your memory is blessed. Don't trip. Don't be stuck in yesterday's brokenness or breakthroughs. Don't do that. Embrace today. Embrace today. You have to position yourself to behold the new and receive what's due. You have to because it's for you. He wasn't telling them I was going to do a new thing for me. He's going to do a new thing for them. And there's a lot more I'm going to say. I, I might have to do this in, in a, um, part two. But there's so much in this. You see, the way you think will produce an answer. It will produce an image. Have you observed your behavior after you keep pondering on a thought, you should stop. You should stop and analyze yourself. You know, I preached a message, consider your ways. You need to stop. Because I had to do it. Like, why do you behave this way at this particular thing or with this particular person? What is the root cause? What is the trigger? That's why I say this deep thing in this house over and over. Mind your business. Align yourself in God first before you look at all the faults that you think you're seeing in others. Because your life ain't right either. The way you think will produce an answer. It will produce an image. It will. However, you have to keep be mindful of this. The obvious answer is not always the right one. The obvious answer is not always the right one. God don't deal with what is obvious. He is God. When he does it, he alone gets the glory. Because it wasn't obvious. It wasn't obvious to reach the Red Sea. And it was obvious that all Moses had to do was lift his rod. And the sea was going to part. That wasn't obvious. That was, that was an answer to go through. But it wasn't an obvious one. Do you understand this? So what you think is obvious, don't attribute to God until you, you get clearance from the Holy Spirit. Don't attribute it to God until you get clearance from the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? The technology of God's wisdom is beyond what we think or ask. Look at Isaiah 55 verse 8. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Listen, God can get more clear than this. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Can someone please stop playing God in your life? You need God, the God of life in your life. You ain't got time to be on no stage playing God of your life. Can someone please stop playing God of the lives of others? Huh? Come here, boy. I'm telling you. Yes, that's what God wants for you. And da, 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 da. no kind of confirmation in the spirit realm for the person. But you, you just sure. When I release a prophetic word, if it does not resi resi um, take residence in the uh, person's spirit, then they don't have to do a thing. I don't force anybody if I release a prophetic word. And many of you up to yesterday got prophetic words. It's up to you what you do with it. Do you understand this? I'm not going to play God and say, come. You need to do this. You need, no, 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 no. I'm not God. I'm nobody's God. I need God. The God of life, I need him. So he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. What looks obvious? It's, it looks obvious. But it don't have to be God. You're going to go through some stuff this week, you know. And you're going to have to make some conscious decisions. Conscious decisions. 
Don't call me. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Because whatever you're going to be dealing with concerning this word is going to be for you. Uh, listen, listen. Let me tell you a secret. Behold what's new. Because it's due and it's for you. It's coming. He said, for the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts. This is, if you can humble yourself after reading this, then I don't know. When you think you know something, like some people, they come to me and they're set. They're just set that this is it. And there are times when I am fixed on a thing. Because I just know it's God because he brings the peace with it. But when you come and you set on something and you're discombobulated, check your source. Because God don't function like that. He's the God of peace, the Prince of Peace. I said to many people, up to yesterday I had to counsel someone after we had our function, while you all went and have fun and swam and do whatever. I was still at work. And I'm like, it is only the peace of God that passes all understanding. Nothing else, not our understanding. Not our understanding of a thing. It's the peace of God that passes on. So once you, God says something and you have peace, then you will function as such. Because you know that you know that you know that you know that you know it's going to happen. I told this house that I was going to receive some things and I had a peace about it, y'all. And guess what? You know. You don't know. I got it. I did. Get it? Because I had a peace about it. He said it, so I said, I know it's you. It resonated in my spirit. I release it. And I functioned effectively, effectively for him until the thing was manifested. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It doesn't mean the thing does not exist. It's just not seen. Why? Because I'm not mature enough to see the thing, to handle it, to manage it. But when I got to the stage of maturity, he said here, Behold! You think. Manage it. You have to learn to trust God. Let go of who you think you are outside of God. That can lead to death. And trust God. Live for him effectively. If he said something, rest in him, trust him, function in his peace, and just wait for God to show up in the, in the context of manifestation. Because he's always with you, so if he's always with you, now it's just for you to receive the manifestation of the thing that he has been holding all the time because everything is in him. It was made for him, by him. <laughs> God, please, Holy Spirit, let them get this. The understanding of who you are and whose you are is far greater than what you do. Many people get busy, 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 busy doing things for God. Serving, 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 doing things. And they just have no clue who they are. And the enemy is monitoring you. So one day he comes in, removes all the things that you're doing, and you want to die. Because you were nothing apart from the things you were doing. That is not of God. If you have to depend on things to tell you who you are, the devil will always come and trip you up. You have to depend on the, on the, the almighty God and his wisdom who describes who you are. Above and not beneath, the head and not the tail. First and not last. Joint hairs. Created in his image. That's who you are. With or without things, you need to know who you are. 
So when things are stripped away, when all is stripped away, what do you do? You come back to the heart of worship. The woman with the alabaster box, she was no longer a, a, a thing. I was going to say Trini too. Let me, let, me, let me get off my chest. She was no longer a thing. Whew, feel better. And she had what was her everything in terms of representation. But after breaking that, she had nothing. But she got identity in Christ Jesus. And that gave her everything. So what you're doing, I'm not discouraging anyone from them doing ministry. But if you can become, it'll be far greater than who, what you do. You are who you are becoming. So become. And don't focus on what you do so much for God. But who you are to him. God can always find doers, you know. But there's a search on for those who want to be. There are a lot of people doing great things out there. A lot of philanthrop uh, philanthropists and a lot of um, people doing a lot of... Um, Charity work. There are a lot of people who are literally giving, uh, feeding the poor, giving things. Do, uh, there's a lot. God, let, let me tell you, there's no shortage of the doers. But we have a little issue with the being. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I'm not discounting those things. Those things are necessary. What I'm saying, what matters to God should matter to you. What matters to him is who you are in him. Yeah. Not what you do in him, but who you are. What you do is, is literally a perk for us to know. We get to do. I'm like so grateful, God. I'm doing something for you. I'm grateful. But who I am in you, I know you prefer that. Are you with me? So it's important that you manage this thing. The office is not greater than the vessel. That is called to be an ambassador, a, a representative of the Most High God, a chosen steward. Your office, this office that I hold, is not greater than who He calls me to be. Am I talking to anybody here today? Are you going to tell me if I ask them? Um, so, so who are you? Or oh, I am, I am KFC, because you work there. Oh, who are you? Oh, I am Domino's Pizza. Are you Domino's Pizza? Are you KFC? So it's not what you do that describes you. How long you're there? For 50 something years, but are you KFC? Are you Uncle Colonel? No, you're not. So what you're doing, you can do it for years, but that's not who you are. Because the day all that is stripped from you, then what would you do? When nobody is there to cheer on for you, when nobody is there to clap. I mean, God forbid, but if I can't do this, it will sadden me if I can't stand and release this word. But I wouldn't die because I can't do it. Because I must find something else to do because of who I am. If what you're accustomed to it's taken away from you. There is so much inside of you that God will always use you on the face of the earth because of the who and not the do. A dauntless disciple, that's who you are. A receptive receptacle, a chosen steward. By God himself, you have to learn to behold the new, receive what's due. Because it's for you. Are you with me? Yeah. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24, the ESV version. I wanted this because of the wording. It says here, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life. I like that wording there. And is corrupt through deceitful desires. 
and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. I want to read it again, Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. To put off your old self that includes your memories. I want to pause and tell you this. How do you put away your old self? Do you go to the mall and purchase new clothing? Think about what I'm saying. And what I'm asking you, how do you put away your old self? It's an internal process, y'all. It's a mental construct that needs to shift. It's a paradigm that needs to change now. Put off your old self. How to do that, y'all? If it's not done in Christ... If it's not done internally, put off the old self and watch this, which belongs to your former manner of life. So your ways and thoughts is who your old self belongs to. Are you with me? And is corrupt through deceitful desires my God when I looked at that again I'm like my goodness for years the deceiver himself has been deceiving the church by making the church feel the old self was okay to bring into the new to bring into the now and I'm not talking individual churches, I'm talking a body of Christ. I realize you're listening attentively, that's good. And it continues to say here, and is corrupt through deceitful desires. I want you to pay attention to this. Not just deceit, but deceitful desires. Y'all check your source. See if your desires are aligned with God's plan and purpose for your life. Or you don't, although you don't know the full details of it, but you have enough word coming from this house and you have enough word in the word that you'll be able to check yourself. Deceitful desires. Having a desire for a thing is one thing, but having a deceitful desire for it is corrupt. Belongs to the old self. The former manner of life. My God, purge us, Father, cleanse us, purify us, remove any measure of deceit and deceitful desires. Remove it now, God, in the name of Jesus. It says here, what you need to do is to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self. Again, you can't go to the mall to get this. Created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So it tells you, it describes your outfit. You put on the new self. Created after the likeness of God <laughs> in true righteousness and holiness. You dress in that outfit. You adorn yourself with that. You clad yourself with such. Deceit shall stay away from you. It will find no room in you. Because of the true righteousness and holiness. Isaiah 42, 9, 10, 8 says, Behold, behold, the former things have come to pass. And the new things I declare before they spring forth, I tell you them. Sing to the Lord a new song. 
and his praise from the ends of the earth. Kingdom Restoration International. Former things have come to pass. New things are before us. And this house shall sing to the Lord a new song. Mm -hmm. Some people got it. Some still waiting. This house shall sing to the Lord a new song. And his praise from the ends of the earth. Global impact is in our reach. But we got to do it through the praises of God. Through the worship of God. Through the word of God. By faith in God. There is no other way but through Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. Your memory can be a gift or a little weapon. But according to the word of God, your memory is blessed. I'm going to be talking about the behold and a new thing. More, I just couldn't put everything in there for you. And just this one hour that we spent together. It's good to prophesy. But let me tell you something. There is purpose for God releasing this word here today. Do not take it lightly. Do not take it for granted. I want you to ponder. Consider this word today. Remember this word today. Because if you're struggling to behold the new, you will struggle to receive what's due. And the thing is actually for you. The thing will reach to you, but you will be struggling to receive it. I am convinced that God is doing and is about to do a new thing in this house. I am convinced. And everyone that is under this grace, my prayer, my, my, listen to me. Everyone that is under this grace, the grace that is in this house, you shall, not might, perhaps, or maybe, you shall arise. You shall prosper in the name of Jesus. As you walk in obedience of Christ. You wouldn't receive it just because I'm saying it. But because what you believe in the word of God and what he is saying through me. I believe that. The oil flows from the head. And right now my head real oily. If you want it, it's yours. Let's stand, let's stand. Come on, with that same enthusiasm. Just release unto God right now. Prepare yourself to behold the new. Prepare yourself to behold the new. Prepare yourself to behold the new. God. Hmm. It's a new season. Father. Hmm. Abba. We want to take this first approach. Because this is the formula you said. You said, do not remember the former things. So God, as we lift our hands today and we bow before you. For many, oh God, who are struggling. Mm, struggling, oh God, to release the former. 
struggling, oh God, to not remember. I want you to notice something. God did not say, forget. He said, do not remember. Do not actively engage and conjure up a memory that you know that's not going to propel you to your destiny. That's going to prevent you from beholding the new. He said, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. The next verse says, shall you not know it? But we're going to get into that. But shall you not know it? In other words, it's in you to know. I, I feel like preaching, but I'll, next week I'll go to last. It's in you to know. Shall you not know it? Do you not believe it? Sometimes we act the way we act because we don't believe what he said. Because if you believe it, your actions will show it. Because we can't see your thoughts, but your thoughts produces. So there's a manifestation. When you speak, we will know if you believe. When you act, we will know if you believe. There's a demonstration that comes after you think it. Give God a moment right now that is just you and Him all over this place. What is your posture going to be in this season? What is your posture going to be in this season? How are you postured now? How are you postured now? How are you postured now? Jesus. <laughs>